There are a ton of investment options when it comes to short-term rentals. I mean, you've seen everything you know you have from glamping to houseboats to trailer parks to beautiful castles to vacation luxury homes on the ocean. I mean, you name it, everything in between there. Uh, it's available to rent right now as an Airbnb. But what makes the most sense? That's what we're gonna talk about this week based on the investment returns, the safety, the stability, and also the financing options available for these different investment options. Let's jump right in. Welcome to Short-Term Rental Riches, where we'll discuss investing in real estate, but with a specific focus on short-term rentals to help you build wealth faster with as little headache as possible. Happy you're here again as always, and another fun topic. And this is gonna be a really good one for all the newbie investors or, or maybe seasoned investors but are looking at exploring other options for short-term rentals. Uh, and so I've broken it down into three categories. This is by no means a overview of everything because you know that we've got <laughs> Uh, options to rent short-term rentals these days, everything from tree houses to houseboats to glamping to yurts to castles to you name it, it's out there now and it's an option. But what makes the most sense, that's what we're talking about this week. And I'm gonna break it down for you guys into three different categories. Uh, we're gonna talk about luxury vacation rentals, expensive, nice luxury vacation rentals, The Rentals on the ocean, overlooking cliffs, overlooking the seas, these really nice ones that have higher price points. Then we're gonna talk about this new, and dare I say, trendy category of short-term rentals, and I'm calling these the exotic ones, or, or sort of the unique ones. So this is gonna be all your tree houses, this is gonna be your houseboats, your trailer parks, these sort of different type options, which can be super profitable, uh, so I'm going to lump those into one category. And then the third category is going to be kind of the, I guess I should say a little more boring rentals. And this is actually the section that I invest in. Uh, and these are rentals that can actually be long-term rentals as well. So we're going to break these down. Um, and just keep in mind, this, this is a broad generalization. Within these three categories, there are tons and tons of other options and limits, and some can return much better than others. But in general, I wanna break these down, and it really comes down to kinda of like this risk reward scenario, right? Actually all investing, I'm sure you've heard this before. The riskier it is, the more uh, chance we have for higher returns, historically speaking, generally speaking. Uh, you know, the investing money in bonds, very safe, but it's gonna have a very, very low return. So uh, I'm gonna break these three categories down with that in mind. So let's just jump into it. The first one here, luxury vacation rentals. So these are your amazing beach mansions. These are your uh, lake houses. These are your traditional vacation rentals where people are going for vacation. They're not necessarily uh, living in these properties. They might be far from city centers. So this is our vacation rental category. And I would say, you know, these are gonna be, these are gonna be our highest price point. So this is one of the cons. I'll break these down in pros and cons. I would say this is the most expensive out of the three categories, but they also have really high chance for return. A lot of these properties are earning thousands and thousands of dollars a night. So that is the reward side of it. Um, but another con, and again, this is a generalization to this category, is that a lot of these vacation rentals might be more seasonal. So keep that in mind. Is it a really nice cabin up on, at the ski resort that only operates or is only gonna be full during the winter season? So this is a little more typical with these vacation rentals. They're gonna be a little more seasonal and we don't wanna bank on just these few three months or we need to keep in mind that this is where we're making all of our money and something changes there's a recession for example well is that amount of money going to be enough for us to cover all of our expenses and in terms of safety in terms of backup plans well i would give this a two out of the three categories so i'd say it's kind of in the middle uh, one is because of the seasonality but another one is that these are vacation rentals for vacation uh, and so if there's a recession 
and people have less disposable income, well then most of the time they go on less vacations, right? Now if this vacation rental is super luxurious, super exotic, you might be targeting a class of people that recessions don't matter to them. They're wealthy, they've got tons of uh, income streams coming in and they're still gonna go on vacation. So it depends on where your vacation is at in that scale. In terms of financing, I'm gonna give this a two out of the three categories because there are financing options available for pure vacation rentals based off the income. And there are more and more coming along, but it's not quite as easy as some of the other categories. So break that down. So, okay, and then on the, the pros side, we talked about we can make extremely high nightly rates. That is amazing. I, I would give that a two actually, though, out of these three categories in terms of reward based on investment. Uh, and then a really nice thing about vacation rentals, a great pro, is that you can build really good loyalty. You get guests coming back year after year after year, and you can really fill out your schedule in advance. So that's a great, great uh, pro. So let's jump into the next category, and this is, this is, these are the fun ones, right? These are the exotic, not that the vacation rental ones aren't, but these are like the new ones um, that are popping up. Uh, and I would give these unique exotic rentals a number one out of the three categories for return, potential investment return. And now this is based off the amount of money invested and the amount that you can get back. Because if we think about it, these weird exotic rentals, tree houses and stuff, they don't cost that much to build, right? 20, 30,000 bucks. But a lot of these are running for 100, 200, 300 plus dollars a night. So you can get your initial investment back really quickly. So it's got a fast payback and I'd give that a number one out of the three categories. You can get your money back quicker in this category than you can in the others. You can also build a reputation with these and, and brand loyalty just like we can with a vacation rental. So this is definitely a pro uh, and that will help you if you have this type of rental and there is a downturn, there is a recession. If you have brand loyalty, you're a, a rock star at the marketing on Instagram and all that stuff, well then you can have your calendar booked up literally for like years. I mean, this is happening with some of these types of rentals. So that is that is definitely a pro. And another pro is that these properties don't have a lot of like carrying costs, you know, the utilities and stuff. And this again, this is generalization. Some obviously have more than others. Uh, but the utilities and these types of costs are going to be lower in this category. Now let's talk about the cons. And again, this is all risk reward scenario, right? So I'm going to say these are the riskiest investments in the short-term rental world, in the short-term rental space. Why? I'm gonna give you my main reasons right now. Well, uh, if there is a recession, again, these types of places are gonna have less guests going to them. These are definitely like a disposable income type of vacation or escape. These are usually more for like quick getaways, two and three nights. So I think if there is a recession, these are gonna get hit the hardest. There's also fewer financing options because this is not a traditional investment. You go to your local le lender or your bank and you say, hey, I want to uh, turn this small trailer park of 10 units into short-term rentals, or I want to put up some tents with air conditioning and, and make this glamping resort. Well, they're not as familiar with that, so there's going to be less financing options. So I would say out of the three categories that this is the gonna perform the worst in a recession you're gonna have the hardest financing options of course they're lower entry points a lot of times and it's gonna be hardest to sell right what if you want to sell this project or you want to sell uh, these tree houses where you have uh, short-term rental guests coming it's gonna be a much smaller market that's gonna be interested in buying that compared to traditional vacation rental or compared to a urban type rental in a city center. So I would say that these do, these weird unique ones have the highest potential for return, but they're also the riskiest. So let's move on to the third category. And this is the category that I invest in. Yes, because I'm a little more conservative. I'm a little boring, whatever you want to call it. I, I put a lot of value into the security in these types of investments in the long run. So I'm in this for the long run. So what are these types of properties? Well, these are gonna be our more affordable 
properties, I guess you could say, more traditional. These are gonna be properties that either have currently a long-term tenant in them or have the easy ability to put a long-term tenant back in them. So they're likely gonna be in the city or near the city or in the suburbs, right? We're not gonna be off in the forest somewhere. We're not gonna be two hours away at some beautiful lake destination. These are more of our city type properties. So the pros. Best financing options. If there's long-term tenants in there, our bank's gonna be comfortable with that. They will give you a loan as long as it makes sense. So that's an easy one. I give that a one out of the three, the three different real estate categories. Definitely the easiest financing options. And I'm also gonna give it a one uh, in terms of safety. This is the safest sector to be in because if there is a recession, uh, and people have less disposable income, they're not gonna be going on these exotic trips as much, they're not gonna be staying at beautiful vacation rentals that cost $5,000 a night. Not as much, I should say, and not all economic classes. But what happens in a, in a downturn, a lot of times, uh, people that are renting, for example, they might be renting a really nice apartment somewhere in the city center, an A-class apartment. Well, if they start making less money, times are tough, they're gonna move out of there and they're gonna move somewhere into like a B-class type investment or even C-class uh, that's not as nice, but it's more affordable. And these are the type of properties that I invest in. These are the ones I teach about. Of course, a lot of things that I talk about uh, applies to all these different levels. Uh, the operations are pretty much the same no matter what type of property you're investing in. Um, but I like this category because it's more resistant just gotta say it, that's, that's the truth. Uh, so it's more resistant to downturns. In fact, depending on where your property is, if there is a recession, sometimes these rents even go up because if everyone's leaving these class A luxury properties to go to other properties, B or C class, well, that puts more pressure on those properties and that means your rents can actually go up. So I think they have the best backup plans and another one of those is it's easiest to sell. If you decide you don't wanna be in the business anymore, uh, or your rental's not working out or whatever it is, you can put that thing on the market. It's a normal type property. You're gonna have more buyers because they have more financing options. It's just gonna be easiest to sell. So what are the cons to these? Well, there are several. I would say that the pros, this is number one uh, in a lot of categories because it's, it's the safest, um, but cons, you're just not gonna make as high of a return with these. Again, this is across the board. This isn't a, you know, there's all different types of properties returning different amounts within these three real estate categories. Uh, but in general, these are gonna be more like a commodity. These are gonna be, you know, there might be a thousand or 2000 in a relatively large city or, you know, who knows, tens of thousands, but they're not gonna be that much different than each other, right? So it's gonna be a little harder to build brand loyalty. Uh, of course, you can do that very easily and, and we do that as well. We get lots of guests returning because they're comfortable staying at our place already. But it's just a little more challenging. It's a little more competitive of a space. It's also easier for someone to enter the market, right? Someone can add uh, rentals down the street from you much easier than they can add a mansion alongside a lake house or you know some place out in the woods or tree houses or, or boats or whatever that is. So it's more prone to, to competition and, and that affects our returns. It can affect our returns. So in a nutshell, those are the three categories. We talked about vacation rentals, which are luxury vacation rentals with much higher price points. They can do very well. Uh, and again, I just try to break these into three categories. Within each category, there's lots and lots of different options. But I would give the luxury vacation rentals in terms of safety and returns, I would give them a two out of the three. So they can have fabulous returns and they're gonna be a little safer. The exotic rentals, these are the tree houses and the, the houseboats and the just the, the weird, unusual type of rentals. I'm gonna give these a number one for having the most potential for return, but on the flip side, I'm gonna give them a three for being the least safe in a downturn and recession, the more risk. So they can have the best returns, uh, but they're also the riskiest. And then uh, we've got the affordable rentals or the traditional type short-term rentals that maybe had a long-term rental in them 
before or that maybe had a long-term tenant in them before. These are the types of properties I invest in. I would give them a three in terms of return, being the worst in terms of return. But remember, these returns are still much better than if we had long-term tenants in there. A lot of my properties are making three, five, eight times what I was making with a long-term tenant. So even though out of these categories, the potential returns are a little less, it's still much better than long-term rentals. Of course, this depends on your property. We talk about that a lot on this channel. So I would say it's three in terms of return, but in terms of safety, I'm gonna give it a one. I'm gonna say it's the safest. There's just more backup plans. You can sell it easier. You got more financing options. It can actually do better sometimes in a recession, just depending on where your properties are. So I hope this helped you guys. Uh, it doesn't mean that you should just be in one category. As long as you're aware of what you're getting into, I think you can have properties in all three of these categories and it can be really fun, right? So uh, hopefully that gave you a little more insight and your guys' investment journeys are going awesome. Hopefully they're growing and you're learning a lot. Uh, and until next time, have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.